Now, profile maintenance, you know, contact and contact updates, um, most of these you need to update frequently. Um, keep it relevant, keep yourself on new stuff screen, you have uh, friends that you can, you know, uh, massage, you can, on, on Facebook it's kind of fun, you can send them smiles, you can send them flags and all kinds of, uh, what is it, flare, and you know, there's all kinds of things that you can send, and, and those things really work well, because if you send somebody a smile, they smile back, you know, I mean, they, you know, so they have all these kind of cutesy things, but it really does keep you connected, and you know, it's a, it's a very easy way of, of, you don't have to write a whole email, you just send them something, you know. Um, and, and again, I recommend play with the privacy settings to control what friends, coworkers, people, you know, you, you don't know can see about you. Um, Again, Charles made a good point. Don't put it on there if you don't want people to see it. But on the other hand, you know, sometimes you want some people, I think what, what you were saying before is some, some people you want to see everything, some people you don't want to see everything. So especially in Facebook, you know, where you might want a friend to be able to go on to your site, look at your wall, look at everything. And, you know, but business colleagues, you may say, no, I only want them to see certain things. So, you know, there are, there, there are reasons that you would put a lot in, but only restrict it to people that you want to have it out there. Right. Yeah, and, and, and there are people that, you know, that, that stalk. I mean, they, there are some negatives about this as well, so, you know, you have to kind of... Yeah. Um, friending, briefly explain who you are and why you are requesting a new friendship or connection. Again, um, that addresses your issue. You know, you might, when you invite that person that you don't know, third party, you might um, say, I'm a friend of so-and-so. Because um, one of the things is you don't want to just go through as a Rolodex and just invite everybody whether you know them or not. I mean, and that's, some people do. They just want, they want to say I have 600 friends and they don't know any of them. You know, so that's, you know. Um, and check out profiles or ask for clarification before accepting someone else's request. One of the things that will happen to you is once you build a profile on one of these networks, you will start getting invited by everybody else as well. So you have to decide, do I accept that, com that um, uh, invitation? The other thing is that uh, in LinkedIn, one of the pieces of creating the 100% of a profile is, as I said, recommendations. And you may send people recommendations, say, would you recommend me? And then you have to be prepared for them to say, I recommended you, would you recommend me? So that requires you to start thinking about, you know, do I want to recommend that person as well? Not that that should stop you from, you know, basically recommending, you know, asking for a recommendation, but you may want to rethink, you know, if it's somebody that, you know, is you, you don't really love their services, et cetera, they're going to ask you for something back, and you may not want to give them what they want. Please. Yes? Let's say you have a, an effective website. Let's say. We've website. built John's website. <laughs> he does have an effective website. <laughs> um, and you're trying to get people, well, in my case, as you know, uh, People come look at my website, but don't then email me. They don't communicate further with me, and I figure if they didn't communicate with me, then I'm not interested to see all the people that didn't communicate with me because they didn't communicate with me in right. the first place. Right. But LinkedIn, I get stuff from Plaxo and LinkedIn and a bunch of other places that everybody wants to me to join in, and it doesn't that it clogs up my email site because it doesn't. The issue is I'm trying to get people to react to the things that I'm doing, not just be part of somebody's connection list. Well, a and so you know, I sort of leave them there, and every once in a while, I look at them and see who's the people it's coming from and who they're connected with. But it's not helping me from a marketing point of view because if they don't get to know what I do and pay any attention, that hasn't been right. progressive. What uh, what's made progress is where people got to my website, right? And then they called me. And they found out mm. that what I could do would help what they needed to do. Right. How do you use any of these I, 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 to that, drive business that's my next. when you're sleeping? Okay. <laughs> Perfect question, because it leads right into my next slide. How do you like that? Social networks and Google. So the, the, the next question is John's question. So what does that mean for my business? <laughs> <laughs> because remember, this is about business. Now, remember, Google is a search engine. 
what's really nice about search engines is that they index and they look through and they can find information on the internet which means they can find stuff on Facebook as well so if you know what you're doing and you add content on your website and you reference your profile on Facebook when somebody's searching for your service that Facebook entry can come up. So if you do it right and you tag it correctly, that can actually work for you in search. Okay? So that's where you want. You want to reference it from your website and you want to reference it to Facebook if you know how to do that with a, you know, the URL for that. That can actually help you because you have another listing. Now, um, for those of you that know about the search, Google search, basically for text you can have two, and this is organic search, you can have two entries. And that's all Google will allow you for text. But if you have a Facebook profile, now you can have that entry as well in the search results. If you tag a video, now you can have two video results in the search results. If you tag your pictures on your website correctly, now you have two pictures. If you have an audio podcast, now you have, so you can basically dominate page one on certain keywords if you know what you're doing. Well, for ex well, I actually have, in, I'm in my booth, I have a, um, uh, I think one of our newsletters, or you can go to the website, on social media optimization. And social media optimization simply is, if you have a picture and you put it on Flickr, okay, you, you have it on your website, but you have it on Flickr, and you can put notes, there are tags that you can put on that are keyword rich about that picture. So you tag it, you put it in Flickr, and it's on your website, and if somebody searches on that term, it should come up uh, on page one. Depending on how many other of your competitors know that you're doing that. Depends on how, well, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things about that, but the fact that you have it in that, uh, in Flickr, is one more place for a resource. But Google can't read pictures, so the only thing they can read is text. So there are ways that you can, you can actually tag or no, PDF is bad. You probably don't want, if you can take anything you have in PDF and put it in HTML, that will help you. Are, are you sure about that? Because I, I see PDFs indexed on Google all the time. I see it. it's, it's, it's hard to index them. If you really want it to be more visible, change it to HTML. That's all I can tell you. And I'm not, you know, I'm not the one that actually does all of this, but I know that we tell all of our clients, take it out of PDF. <laughs> you know, I mean... It, it may be indexed. We don't know what else is around it. It might be a title that, that brings it up. You don't know that. Not the actual text. But basically, PDF is a picture file. So you're not getting, the, you're not getting maximum bang out of it. Let's put it that way. But all your text will become visible if it's in HTML. So you might want to do that. Um, Basically, Google profile optimization. So this is, you know, use, Google, use personal name or company product name, brand name as a profile name, MySpace and LinkedIn only, okay? Um, basically, Facebook works differently, but you can also, um, you know, as I said, reference a Facebook page uh, on your site, uh, and then you can tweak the profile, the URL to contain personal. You can actually build um, a URL with those things in them. So you actually can, that's the tag. You can actually build it correctly. Um, and there, you know, to do a lot of this, there are lots of books out there saying, you know, tagging video or, you know, putting, um, you know, creating the right kind of URL to, um, uh, to, to have a Google optimized URL for Facebook. So then it can give you the exact stuff that you would need. Again, I don't, I don't do all of that, but, um, you know, and then, again, point a few links to the profile page to increase ranking from your website. So the, you, your, your profile has a URL, point to it, and say, I have a, you know, like if there's a bio, say I also have a bio on, on Facebook. I have a bio on LinkedIn. I have a, you know, and then when they click, they get to your bio, so it's one more piece of, of data.